Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of uh, just go over what I talked about with um, someone on a one-on-one -on -one video yesterday. I did a one-on-one -on -one with this lady, and I would just like to kind of share what we went over and discussed, but what she wanted to help with was trying, she was trying to connect with her third eye better, trying to open the third eye, and instead of having to meditate to reach this source or connect to this source, because she kept telling me she can't connect to this source or this spirit until she meditates, and she wants to know how she can do this without meditation or without any effort at all. And so that's what I'm going to kind of break down for people in this video, is realizing that duality, which appear separate, polar opposites, are in fact one and the same. They're not separate at all. And the only reason they appear separate is because they're both concepts from consciousness. They're both coming out of consciousness. You are consciousness. So to say you and to say me are only separate because of consciousness. The construct you have of the duality inside outside creates you and me, two polar opposites. So you can view this as separate because you are you, I am me. At face value, we are completely, totally different people. We're in two different positions of space. We're two completely different things and this cannot be debated but what we don't realize is the sky always touches the sea and this is something this is a quote that I'm gonna create as my own the sky always touches the sea and there's so many people looking for the land beyond the eye and this is something that's inside of Alice in Wonderland where is the land beyond the eye where's the land beyond the eye where did the stars go where does the crescent moon go this is an Alice in Wonderland intro song and the reality is, is there is no land beyond the eye. So as long as NASA and people, scientists, physicists, as long as we're searching for a starting point outside of us in space or inside the smallest atom, we'll never find what we're looking for because we're not realizing the inside and outside are already one and the same. So... The center of the universe can only be the focal point which is projecting the entirety out. It's just like a virtual uh, a reality game. Once you put on the headset, your headset is already projecting the entire game out. That'd be like putting on a headset and trying to figure out what's creating the picture. It's you the whole time. So you can study and dissect all the pictures and images and deities and experiences outside of yourself. You can study them to the very most microscopic atom and you will still never find what it is you're looking for because you're not realizing you're already the entirety. So anything outside of you is your mirror. When you look into a mirror... You're, you're, you're convinced beyond a doubt you're looking at yourself because you see your reflection. If I raise my hand, the mirror raises its hand too. So you can identify with what you see in the mirror. But what we don't realize is the mirror is not, in fact, what you are physically. The mirror is what you are appearing as outside of yourself because the inside and outside are one and the same. Consciousness. They're only separate because of us appearing through different positions in space, physically. But you are the mirror to me as I am the mirror to you. You cannot view your own face because you project the entirety out. Each of us are our own independent universes. And this is something that, that the governments and all these people will never tell you. Here and there are the same place. The two are always one and the same. The sky always touches the sea. So although they appear separate, here and there are the same. And this is what they're not telling anybody, is our universe is not physical. Our universe is not here nor there. Our universe is nowhere. It's not physical. You can't physically, to the human consciousness, we can travel from place to place and appear in certain places and it feels beyond real but the reality is is you're not traveling outside of consciousness here and there are the same place 
and how our consciousness works is the same way light works. Light does not travel. Light is a rate of induction, but light never travels outside of itself. Light acts as a circuit, meaning it begins and ends in the very same place. Our consciousness is no different. We begin and end in the same place only to realize that we've never left where we thought we have, because in the body we're physically traveling from place to place, from here to there, but here and there are one and the same thing. They appear separate because they have to be. The purpose is in the journey. And this right here is the entire purpose behind the Wizard of Oz. There's a lot of theories about the Wizard of Oz movies and, and what or the Wizard of Oz movie and the book and what it represents, and there's many people who have their own illustrations or, or depictions of what it is, but in my opinion, Dorothy has to, in the beginning of the movie, she's, she's living in her, her real life day to day. She fears this woman who, who's later in her dream acted out as the witch. I'm not sure her, her exact name, so forgive me for that, but the woman who rides the bike and takes her dog away. She is the one who plays the witch in her dream, but in her real life, day to day, she is afraid of this woman, and she feels powerless. So she creates this dream of Munchkinland. She has to travel to Munchkinland and appear here, here at the center of the yellow brick road. You notice how the yellow brick road is a, is a spiraling void. And you know how they tell her, you have to start at the very beginning of the void, at the very beginning of the yellow brick road, which is the point, because all things begin from the point. And she has to walk her way outside the vortex, just like us as independent universes. We are the universe unfolding on itself. So we appear here through birthing, we, we appear here, and we have this idea of, of where, where there is. We all have our own unique idea of where there is, and we're all trying to get there. And if we can just make it there, make it to the other side, everything will fall into place. We will attain our sovereignty, we will attain the knowledge of God, and we will realize everything. But what we're not realizing is here and there are the same place, but the purpose is in the journey. So you have to appear here to make it to there, to realize the two are one and the same. What happened when Dorothy made it to Oz? She realized that she had what she was coming there for the entire time. And at the end of the dream, Galinda, the princess, tells her, you've had the power all along, my dear. But she couldn't tell her in the beginning because the purpose is in the journey. It's just like you coming to a guru. He can't just tell you the answer because why you wouldn't believe it. The purpose is in the journey, so you have to persist in your journey that here and there are separate, so you can experience for yourself that what you are calling here and there are one and the same, and you have the power the whole time. This is the point of the Wizard of Oz. Each one of them had what they were looking for already. They awakened from the dream, the illusion that they didn't already have their power. And this is why I say to people, if anyone outside of you can convince you that they hold power over your mind, they do. As long as they can convince you, they have power over you. You're under their power, under their control. And it's the very same thing with government conspiracies. A lot of us begin our awakening. A lot of us begin our, our journeys into spirituality without the, the intention of revealing ourselves, but we're trying to figure out what is enslaving us. We're aware that there are corrupt and evil forces running this world, and so we start diving into government conspiracies because we want to get to the root of who is enslaving the world. Why is the world being enslaved? Why is the world going so corrupt? And you want to put a face to this, to this corporation who's enslaving the world so you can finally see Who's responsible for all this, this bad doing? But remember, here and there are already the same thing. It's you. So at the end of your, your journey into spirituality, you should be realizing that you enslaved yourself by proposing the idea that a government had any control over your mind. This is why the governments worship and speak through symbolism. They worship the all-seeing eye, which is a singular eye, because it represents 
are single consciousness. And when you find this out, you become your own liberator. You realize you were enslaving yourself by convincing yourself someone else had control over your mind. And you're your, your own liberation. You're what you've been waiting for. You're what you've been seeking the entire time. So I want to I want to start getting into how to connect to the third eye, and I'm going to kind of bring back what I talked about yesterday with this this very nice woman. But um, what I said was basically, sorry, got that wrong. We begin life. We begin life. The first thought that we begin with is. We have to learn a language, right? We have to learn a language before we can have the voice in our head speaking. So before the voice in our head becomes consciously aware that someone is aware and we're speaking, we have to acquire a language, a spoken language. So once we acquire the spoken language, now we can become self-aware and put into words why I'm a body. I'm inside of this body. This is what I am. This hand is my hand. This hand is completely separate from the walls, from the room. My entire body is separate from this wall and room. So instantly, the first concept that you have of life or anything at all is the inside of something. You're born out as a body. So what you have, the first concept you can have is you are a body. And with the body comes the inside. You know the inside. Right? Which would bring you to the below. As above, so below. But remember, you're not aware of any of this yet. So you're just a body. You're aware of the inside of something because you are the inside of this body. You're the inside voice that you're hearing. So you're the inside and you're the below. You're the below, the microcosm. So that brings in the microcosm. And this is what we are through our six human senses. This is what allows us to identify with all the things I'm going to name here. So with the microcosm, you figure out what you are. What are we? We are creation. We were created here. So we are creation. And then you study yourself even further and you realize, well, I was birthed here and I have to have a death here. So you realize... There is a boundary between your lifespan, what you are. You're, you're bound to a birthing and a death, beginning and end, black hole, white hole. The mouth, the, the, the anus, and excuse me for saying it, but it's true. We are a field of energy ourselves. Our, our very bodies are the torus field. So we take in our foods through this hole. We eject them through the, the, the rear, obviously. That is the constant in, out, in, out force. We are a field of energy and we are reflecting the very universe we study because the two are one and the same. Everything you're experiencing outside of you is your mirror. So just as Alan Watts said, when you look up at the stars, when you look up at these planets, you should be staring at them and saying, my God, that's me. That is me. This is the me that I can never perceive. This is inside of my mind, stretched outside of me. But for some reason, when we look into a mirror, and then we look outside, we're not seeing the same thing. But I want to tell people, when you look into a mirror, and when you look outside or anywhere outside of yourself, you should be realizing it is your mirror. And yes, I, I do realize this is all backwards, but when I do um, edit the video and upload it on my YouTube channel, this is all going to be reversed for you, so don't worry about that much, okay? Don't focus on that, just just focus on the words, and, and trust me, when it's um when I edit this later, I'll flip it around for you, but if you could just work around that for me. So with creation comes mortality, we're birthed here and we die here, so again, that's the duality, beginning, end. The song you listen to, beginning, end. The movie you watch, beginning, end. Your day, beginning, end. Everything, beginning, end. So, we're mortal. We're mortal, and we know this beyond a doubt because beginning, end. We have a boundary of our lifespan, more beginning, end. So that brings you to mortal and finite. You are finite because you are mortal. So, with our six human senses alone, basically... 
I got a piece of hair sticking up here. I just don't want to stay down. Whatever. <laughs> um, so with our six human senses alone, basically, this is what we're allowed to perceive and identify with. And this is what allows us to, right out of the gate, fall for the illusion of separation. Realize that outside is outside, inside is inside. They're two separate things. So now, once you've realized yourself through the six human senses as everything I've named here, the body, the inside of something, the below, the microcosm, the creation, the mortal, and the finite. So with this knowledge, now you can begin asking, where did the body come from? Why am I inside something? What If there's a below, what is above? If there's a mac microcosm, where's the macrocosm? If there's a creation, where's the creator? If I'm mortal, where's the immortal? If I'm finite, where's the infinite? So just by studying your own self, you now have a concept of what you are and what you are not. But again, they appear separate. So now you know what you are and what you are not. So the opposite of the body would be the universe because that's not what you are, remember? So the, with the universe, because the body's the inside, with the universe comes the outside. The opposite. With the below comes the above. Mm -hmm. With the microcosm comes the macrocosm. And again, I'm going to flip all this at the end of this video, so don't worry about that. And with creation comes the creator. Mortal comes immortal. And finite becomes infinite. But remember, through our six human senses, we're not allowed to identify with this. So we begin life seeking, we're a body, so we begin life seeking our human origin, a beginning. Because remember, we're bound to mortality, finite. So we begin instantly searching for our beginning. Where's the beginning to the universe? Where's the beginning of man? Because we're not realizing at this stage that we're already infinite, immortal, we're the creator, we're the macrocosm, we're the above, and we're the universe. So we're seeking things which don't actually exist because we are still living in the boundary, the lower consciousness, which is just the body, just one side of what we actually are. And the fact is, we have two identities. The above and the below are one, and they are you. But we are only allowed to perceive and experience the inside. So it's very obvious. You're only going to identify and, and realize the inside as you. Beyond a doubt, this is you. But what you don't realize is, is this works in relation to this as this works in relation to this. The two need each other. So now I'm going to get into how you bring these two together. Because... The person I spoke with yesterday was trying to bring her human mind together with the God mind, what you call God. And don't get into technicalities or words. I get people commenting all the time, well, it's not God, it's this or it's that. As long as you have the understanding that this is everything, this is the ultimate, this is infinite, this is, this is what you're calling the, the, the ultimate creation or creator. You've got the God mind and you've got the human mind, which again are two opposites. So the human mind is trying to connect to the Godhead. We're trying to, to find God. We're trying to become a part of the infinite again. And so this is what the woman said. How can I better, because she said the only way I can seem to connect with this, this space up here is when I meditate. And she's like, I don't want to have to do something to, to get there. I just want to be there. And that's the greatest trick is you are already there and you're always there. But... You have to appear as if you're not. But you're already there. So how you bring these two together is you realize you are not, and here's the greatest part. Are you ready for this? You are not this, and you are not this. So now you can say, well, what the heck am I? I'm not either one, that's impossible, because I can feel my body, and my body works in relation to the universe. How am I neither one? Well, 
because you are right here. Remember, you're already there. You're right here. Physically, you're traveling through the body, so it appears beyond a doubt you're, you're here. You're here. And you're trying to make it to the above. You're trying to make it to there. But just like Dorothy, she had to appear in Munchkin Land as here, follow the yellow brick road there, up here, to the great Oz, the god, to realize the Oz was a fraud. And it's not that he was a fraud. But they were discovering in that moment they already had what they were seeking. Because you are what you're seeking. And this is why what you're seeking is seeking you. Because it is you the entire time. So you have to appear here to make it to there to realize you weren't here and you were not there. You've been here the entire time in the center and source. You are source. So the only thing allowing the human and God to appear separate is the very same thing which created the concept of both. What created the concept of a human being? And what created the concept of God? Your consciousness. Your consciousness created this identity of God, and your consciousness created the identity of a human. And since you were born socially conditioned to tell you you're a human, you couldn't be anything but. That's how we're socially conditioned and trained. You're a human and nothing but. And this is why the human being is seeking its origin, its beginning, its starting point in outer space. Because we're not realizing here and there are the same thing. What we're looking for in outer space is this right here, the point. The starting point, the origin. And you do not find it until you realize... That anything outside of you is the mirror to your focal point, which is already inside of you. So as long as you're seeking outside of you and going further and further and further and further and further, you will drive yourself mad. Just like Alice trying to chase the white rabbit, which didn't even exist. But you have to chase it long enough until you can realize, because the purpose is in the journey, until you can realize that what you are chasing does not exist. You have created this identity of God for you to catch. And when you catch it, you will realize you were not this and you were not this. You're so much more. You are so much more. But through social conditioning and all these, these religions, we're pushed into boundaries, into limits, into confinements. And this is why humans are beating their brains against walls, trying to find the starting point in space. We feel like it's going to be somewhere far out there in space. Or we feel as if it's going to be deep inside the, the littlest atom. And if we can just microscopically dissect it deep enough, we'll find what it is we're looking for. We'll arrive at this point. But what we don't realize is this point at the end of the tunnel is the point which is already inside of your mind. It's inside of your head. This point, as I said, when you look at a mirror and you see your reflection, you can identify this as yourself because it's doing everything you're doing. You can identify with this person. It's me. But you can't identify with this, however. Why? Because you can't feel it. You can't experience it as far as senses. I can't taste, touch, smell that. So of course it's not me. It's not me at all. But what you don't realize is it is you, and we're not identifying with it. Realize that this point, which you have your, 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 your focus stuck on, you're, you're stuck on it, and you're trying to go deeper and deeper, deeper into the rabbit hole, and you'll never find what it is you're looking for. And the game doesn't change until you realize. Holy crap. Is that me? I've been at this for years, and I can't find what I'm looking for. Why is this? I can't find it anywhere. And this is what, what, what Buddha drove himself insane over. Buddha was convinced that... I've read every book there is on Buddha. Buddha was convinced beyond a doubt that there was an answer out there. An answer, an absolute answer, that once you find it, everything just reveals itself. And it's an answer we're all waiting for. So Buddha went and he meditated in a forest for years. And he convinced himself he was not going to leave until he found the answer. 
And it took this man years to realize. And it's nothing to sit here and say years because you're not, you're not living there in a forest day after day, week after week, month after month. Imagine doing this for years. That's insanity. The Buddha, before going into the forest, went to every guru, every teacher in India and around the land. He mastered every philosophy, every study that they gave him. And it still was not his answer. He was unsatisfied. So he finally said, you know what? I'm going to meditate in this forest and I won't leave until I find what I'm looking for. So if he died there, he died. He didn't care. He was going to find it. Only to realize... And this is not the answer people want, but there is no answer. You're creating something for yourself that you have to catch, that you have to chase. Because you, are, you have yet to identify with and realize the inside and outside are in relation to one. That the point outside of you is already you. This is your focal point inside of your mind stretched inside out. You could never experience the inside of you. So how do you experience the inside of you? You stretch the inside of you outside of you. So when you look up at the stars and you're looking for the starting point, realize you're already the, starting, the starting point right here. You're already the entirety projected out. This means you could go as far into space as you wanted for years upon centuries, upon millions of, of years, and you will never be able to go far out enough because you're not realizing the inside and outside are one thing. Every single thing outside of you is your mirror, is your inside stretched outside of you. And this is why we have the power because as I said, we're all our own universes right inside of our minds. You project the entirety out. Therefore, you are your own universe as I am my own. Why do we all see the same earth and connect to the same things? And, you know, if, if there's a car parked here, you're going to see the same car parked. You know, we're not seeing different things. Because we're both connected to the singular network we're calling consciousness. I've said this before. I believe consciousness is just like a, a, a news station or something. There's an infinite amount of channels but Earth is just one channel. And that's the thing. The Earth in our universe is not physical. It's not here and it's not there. And this, I feel, is the greatest kept secret from hum the humanity. This is what NASA is lying about. And I'm not saying the Earth is flat, round, any shape at all. Because the reality is it's not a shape at all. And my opinion is as long as it can fit inside the platonic solids, it can take any one of those shapes. And it can become as real as you make it. But as I've said, the inside and outside are one and the same. So you wouldn't know the difference whether you were inside the earth or outside the earth. Inside the universe or outside the universe. You can convince yourself beyond a doubt you would know the difference, but you would not know the difference. Just as you don't know the difference right now if you are alive or dead. They sound the same, or they sound different, alive, dead. So therefore they can't mean the same thing. But again, it's just like this. The body and the universe, they have to appear separate, but what you call life and what you call death are just two concepts created from source, consciousness. Just as you've created the identity of God and human, you created this, this on and off system called life and death. But the reality is, life is conscious and death is conscious. They're one and the same. Daytime is conscious, nighttime is conscious. Everything has an on and off. And it's that way for a reason. If you've ever had a, a, a very troubling day or just a brain overload, we have sleep for a reason. There's a reason our day has to end. So you can start over and refresh and wake up brand new the next morning. It's the same thing with the life and death phase, just on a, 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 a longer scale, obviously. But the same way you can't, you can't always be the same person forever. Just as Alan Watts said, that would be the most incredible bore ever. You couldn't just stay in one place, one person forever. And I've said this as well. People think they want to, uh, to make it to heaven and be at this place forever. But the reality is, ask yourself what a prison is. What is a prison or what is a, a jail? 
It's a place where you're stuck in one spot. So to be stuck in one spot forever, whether you call it heaven or, or whatever you call it, this is a prison. There's a reason you're not stuck in one spot forever, stuck in one body forever. There's a reason for reincarnation. There's a reason for on and off. You think you may want to be you forever, but if you even could concept, or if you could even get the conceptualization of what you're calling forever, you'd want to beat your head against a wall because you don't realize forever means just that. No on, no off. You don't want that, honestly. You need the on and off. You need life. You need death. You need sleep. You need to be awake. But the fact is, the two are both one. Consciousness. And they can only be experienced as separate because they're appearing as polar opposites. Through this one mind, which we're calling consciousness. Consciousness is the singular network. And that singular network is the all-seeing eye that everyone fears. Stay away from it because it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. How is a symbol going to harm you? It has zero intentions. Zero. But the reason you put this off, the reason you refuse to look at it, the reason you stay away from Freemasonry is because you already know. They have an answer greater than what you want. You're not ready for that answer. So you push it aside. You call it demonic. You call it Satanism. And because, again, you're playing the game of awakening with yourself. You don't realize these people are you. For all to be one, it means just that. Yes, you appear separate, but again, the sky always touches the sea. I am you as you are me. So how about this? The same way I've separated what I call God from a human, because I'm a human and God is up here, right? The same way you have separated these two is the same way you have separated this right here. You... And me, we're separate beyond a doubt, right? Because they sound different. You are you and I am me. But let's not get confused. When anybody speaks about themselves, what word do they use? They do not use you and they do not use me. Because we are all one. And that one is what you call I. I am that I am. And I can't be anything else. Just because I say you are you does not mean you are separate from I. The only thing making you separate from me is our physical appearance. But again, you are my outside mirror. I cannot view my own face and this is why I am projecting you into existence as you are projecting me into existence. So we can experience each other and view our own face because we are this point. That's why you can't view your own face. You need the illusory mirrors to appear in front of you and as separate from you so you can experience yourself, so you can view yourself, so you can study yourself and finally make the connection. This is me. The stars I'm looking at, this is me. The atoms I'm looking at, this is me. There's an infinite amount of universes, no matter you go bigger or smaller. You will still run into yourself. That's you, and this is you. Here is you, and there is you. And so long as you're convinced beyond a doubt that they're separate, you are living in a lower consciousness. One where, again, you're just a human being, and you're seeking an origin that does not exist. And that's, that's the only reason I call it a lower consciousness. I don't mean to call anyone names or, or put down anyone. That's not my intention by saying that. But I call it a lower consciousness because you're looking for something that does not exist. It's maddening. You do not extract a beginning from infinity. But you're convinced you're, you're mortal, you're finite because you were bound to the body, you were birthed here. So you're looking for your starting point. So... To answer the question, basically, of how you connect to your third eye, you connect the third eye by joining the two together. When the two become one, you attain your sovereignty. You reach the point which you have been looking for your entire life. And you should be identifying as this point. I'm not the me I thought I was. Remember, me is down here. I'm not me. I am I. I am Source. 
And another thing, I'm not here and I'm not there. I just am. I am that I am. The sky always touches the sea. There is no land beyond the eye. There's no land beyond the eye. The inside and outside are one and the same thing. And this is my favorite analogy of the sky always touches the sea. Here on this pillar you have the sky, the above, and on this pillar you have the below, the land, the sea. They appear separate from, from close up, from face value. They appear separate. So when you're standing on the ground here, you look up at the sky and you say, you know, they're separate. Beyond a doubt, they're separate. This is not, this can't be debated. But little do you know, your, your vantage point from where, where, where you can see is eliminated is no longer the vantage point where, where everything you see beyond here is, is void, is nothing. It always converges to a point. So what this is showing you is the sky always touches the sea. The two always will meet as one point in the center. And you are this point in the center. You're not here and you're not there. You appear separate just as these two pillars. But they will always meet in a singular point, which is where you should meet yourself. And that's what you see in every picture here. You're split between your own brain. Because remember, the inside and outside are one and the same. Why does my brain have two hemispheres? And why does the earth have two hemispheres? I can answer that. Because everything outside of you is what's inside of you stretched inside out. You are literally seeing the mirror of inside of you. You're seeing the part of you which you can never see. You can never go inside the body and explore it. This is how you're doing it. The people at NASA don't get this. They're sending rockets into space and they're not realizing you are exploring your mind. It's you. So that's what this is showing you. The two always meet as one in a median, in a middle. The two are always meeting as one in the middle. Two from one. The two are one, always. And that's the same with the sun and moon. Ra and Isis. And just as I said, the universe is not physical. That's something that they cannot tell people because people would lose their shit. They would lose their minds. Because not everyone would know how to take that. The universe is not physical, the sun and moon are not physical, and this is the sole reason why they had to fake a moon landing, to pose the fact that the moon is physical, the sun is physical. They can't tell you this is an electric universe and that we're inside a video game or a simulation, if you will. There is no physical universe. The universe is in relation to our conscious minds. You take away our conscious minds and our six human senses, and the entire universe goes with it too. The entire universe will dissolve before your, your very eyes. Because the universe is working in relation to the inside of you. It's one and the same. So I'm going to kind of wrap up this video into a, just a conclusive summary here, but... The, the purpose of these videos that I make are, are to help people make the connection into oneness, into source, into the third eye, into God, whatever you call it. All of us are born knowing something greater than ourselves. It's something we cannot put into words, but we feel so deeply inside of us that we begin a persistent search. And everyone begins searching in different places, but they all lead to the same spot. And that's the source, the self. At the end, you should be realizing you're here. And this is why I tell people, it doesn't matter whether you study the body or the universe. They both lead back to the same place. But you have to realize the two are working in relation as one. As long as you're posing the idea that these two are separate, you will never have your answer. And in fact, you will be searching for things that do not exist. God is an identity you have created out of consciousness. 
Yes, God represents infinity. It represents the, the whole, the totality. But God has been given an image. So now when we say the word God, we think of a man. When we're, we're made in the image of, we think, well, we're the image of a man. This is a created identity which gives you the illusion or gives you the idea that something other than you is the creator. So you don't have to take responsibility for the creation. You don't have to take responsibility for, for, for what happens. The entire game changes when you become the I. And it's not something everyone wants to admit to themselves because it's very hard leaving behind the human mind you once thought you were. With all due respect, this is all we've ever known since our birthing. So to say goodbye to this idea of ourselves can be one of the hardest things that we can do. And this is the very purpose of spirituality. There is a part of you that is dying, but you are also becoming the everything you seek. So it's bittersweet. There's an exchanging here. This is the true meaning of spirituality. There are people out there that are going to tell you spirituality is love and flowers and beautiful things. And that spirituality can be very ugly because you are going within yourself and not everyone can do this. You are doing the inner work. You're looking into the mirror, which most people refuse. And that's the hardest thing you can do. You're taking responsibility for your creation. You no longer have someone else to blame. You no longer have to ask for forgiveness for someone outside of you. It's you. You forgive yourself. You heal yourself. You manifest yourself. You do not wait to be saved. You do not wait for something to happen. You don't wait to be forgiven. You become everything you await. Why are people in religion on their hands and knees worshiping someone? I can tell you why. Maybe not all of them, but most of them are praying and hoping they will be saved. And they feel they have to dedicate their lives to waiting to be saved. But this is why you will wait and wait and wait. Just as those who seek, you will seek and you will seek and seek until you realize it's already you. You do not have to attach to anything. It becomes yours once you let it go. But we think the opposite. We think if I hold on tight enough, this will be mine forever. But by you holding on, you're falling for the illusion that this is not already you. That you're not already what you're waiting for. Someone who confidently lets go is someone who already knows. It's going to come back. It's already you. Anyone you love is already a part of you. You're experiencing them because of your inner consciousness. You created them. You brought them into being. So you could understand love. So you could understand others. So you could understand loyalty and concepts which you could never know. But the first thing that people say to me, people who are bitter and not ready to accept this, this concept, I should say, is what about the murderers, the rapists, and all the things that go wrong in the world? That's me too. All is one. So while it's not you in this body that's doing it, you're still doing it to yourself. And this is why it's so important for people to realize oneness. This is why I speak with such passion, because we're killing ourselves. We're hurting ourselves. We're raping ourselves. We're abusing ourselves. We're putting down ourselves. It seems now that we're in a time where people are not comfortable with giving someone else a compliment. We're not okay with seeing someone do better than us and being genuinely happy for them. We're in competition. If someone's doing better than me, I have to feel bitter. I have to be jealous because that should be me. But we don't realize that is you. Celebrate. You're not in competition with him, with her, with anyone. 
And as long as you're making this a competition and a comparison game, you're living for the wrong reasons. It's time to take back your life. Realize it's you. And also realize that, that doing so is one of the most hardest things a human being can possibly do. It's not easy. So if you're even in the beginning stages of this, give yourself credit. Honestly, give yourself credit. Because this is not an easy thing to do. People go into spirituality with the joy of excitement and it's new and it's something that's going to be great and so beautiful, but they don't realize spirituality is the death of illusion. You will mourn the loss of what you think you are. It's bittersweet. You are literally... The best comparison I can give to spirituality is the phoenix. The phoenix kills itself in a sense. It dies, but then it rebirths and rebuilds itself from its very own ashes. In other words, what broke you is going to create you into something even bigger and better. But you're clinging on to what you're trying to destroy or what you're trying to see past. You're clinging on to it so it will never be seen through until you let go. The hardest thing is letting go. But once you do so, you will go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. A limited consciousness to an unlimited consciousness. You will no longer seek your human origin. Because you will realize, I am not a human. I am consciousness. And consciousness is infinite. But remember, there's an on and off stage. So you didn't just appear here from, from nothing. There was an on and off stage. So there was a slight off stage or a pause where you don't appear. And then the on stage again where you're birthed into a human being and appear again. To realize self again. But I'm going to wrap up this video. I went like 30 minutes beyond my conclusion. <laughs> but um, thank you to everybody who follows and who, who resonates with my message. I'm not trying to force myself or my message on anyone. I'm simply just trying to be the mirror for people who, who, who are seeking this knowledge and who resonate with it. And for people who do, that's great. For people who even disagree... I have no hostility toward you. We're all the same expression. So even if you disagree with me, you're still right. You're still correct. Because your perception cannot be wrong. There's no such thing as a wrong perception. What you are perceiving is truth because you are living it. So we cannot call each other wrong. Ego calls each other wrong and right. But I'm going to put this video on my YouTube... My YouTube channel is Red Pill Rabbit Hole. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. I'm going to have this video on my Facebook page too, Order of the Black Wheel Matrix. And for everyone on here, if you could please just share this video if it resonated with you. And if you'd like your friends to maybe get this message too, please, if you could share this. I There's not a day. I think I'm banned from, from sharing into groups probably most of the month. I'll get... The one day that I come out of my ban, I'll share maybe three videos into a group and I'll be put on my ban right again. So the past five or six months, there hasn't been more than two days where I'm not banned from sharing my content because I'm, I'm constantly getting reported and, sh and whatnot. So if you could share this in groups or just wherever, that'd be most appreciated. The only place I can share it is my groups that I admit admin and my page. So... Thank you for letting me speak on your page or just be a voice on your page or in your group if you have done so. Thank you and just for listening and being here and taking part in this. Thank you very much. Have a good conscious Tuesday. Have a good conscious week. And remember, it's you.